Hey, what's going on guys? I am Jay with Jay's Two Cents and this is part two of Project Red Mist, uh, or AKA Project Overkill, or just Project Jealousy. I think Project Jealousy would have probably been a more appropriate name because I am jealous of what you see behind you and it's just barely started to come together and it's not too late for me to, to take this and run away to Mexico and live like a king, is it? You know, I, mean, he, I mean, he doesn't know where I live, I don't think. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about what's happened since part one. Part one, if you recall, was an introductory video of all of the parts that we're gonna be using in Project Red Mist. Now, what I did first, uh, besides just obviously doing our bench testing uh, and making sure everything worked, uh, was we went ahead and installed all of the water blocks that we're gonna need to put on all of the parts. Now, as I mentioned, we are doing the motherboard full cover water block here from EK uh, for the motherboard, so that's Southbridge and the VRM cooler. Uh, as well as water cooling the graphics cards, the GTX 780 Ti's. Now I wanna talk about something real quick with the 780 Ti's. Uh, since the 295X2 from AMD has launched, uh, which is going to be their competitor to Nvidia's uh, Titan Z, uh, or Titan Stupid, however you wanna say that, I guess would be a more appropriate name. Um, these cards were already purchased before that card was even teased, guys. So a lot of you, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but some of you were certainly like, hey, why didn't you go with the, you know, the 295X2? That didn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, you know, I'm not convinced that even if we had known about the card at the time that this build was being put together, I don't think we would have gone with it. Um, I have never personally had good experience with dual GPU cards over two separate cards in SLI. And whereas this may bench slightly lower on the benchmarks um, compared to you know what's already been shown on some of these benchmarks with the 295X2, this just looks a whole lot cooler. It, it just, having one card with a full cover block on there, whether it be a dual card or not, just doesn't look as cool as two cards. So, I mean, come on, let's face it. Part of this project is, um, this isn't a practical build. There's nothing practical about this. So I just wanted to address that. Um, but what we did, as I mentioned already, was we got the, the blocks on all of our parts and got them uh, bench tested to make sure all the RAM modules work, CPU works, and the graphics card work. So what we're gonna do next um, is I'm, I'm pretty much just gonna tell you what I'm planning on doing uh, in the next part of that of this build. And to do that, we need to kind of, we need to get a little bit closer. And I don't think you guys have a problem getting closer to this beast. So let's go ahead and let's move on in. Just come on. Don't be shy. Just you in the back. Stop pushing. You'll get up here. Just relax. We're all gonna have our turn. Uh, but single file. Let's let's get a little closer. Now, what I think strikes all of us immediately when we take a look at this thing is just how much room there is in here for activities. Uh, the guy that I'm building this for actually said he needed a place to park his car, and I think that in here would actually be a perfect dual purpose case. You know, this uh, SMA8 from Case Labs is a perfect. A place to house your computer and a, a garage, a separate a detached garage from your house. So, so as you can see, we've got the GTX 780s here with their full cover blocks on there. Sexy as hell with that back plate. Our Dominator RAM looks really, really good. The aluminum's a little out of place. I'm debating doing something custom with this. I just haven't made up my mind yet on that, but we'll figure it out later. We've got the EK Supremacy block on there. Um, I had some questions because of some stuff I put up on Instagram that you guys should be following, by the way, because I put a lot of the build stuff that, as it's happening up on Instagram, actually. Um, they asked why I was still using the stock block on this. Well, this, this is not the stock block. What you see here is a plastic cover as part of the thermal shield that is part of Asus's uh, Maximus 6 full cover here. So that's just a plastic decorative piece that is over the block in which I removed. Um, why did I remove the block that was already built in? Well, it was an aluminum block and I'm not happy with, we, I don't like mixing aluminum in my loops. Uh, you have a hard time finding any sort of diehard water cooler who's willing to put aluminum mixed in with any other metals in their loop. It's just not a good idea. Uh, regardless of what anyone will tell you, that is the way I feel and that is never going to change. So with all of this space over here, I'm trying to decide how I want to mount the reservoirs. I mean, here are the reservoirs as I'm about to knock them over right there. Now, I could do what everybody does, which is putting them, you know, side by side like this, nice and spaced out, uh, probably, probably about right there, even with the top of the motherboard. 
or maybe even space mine a little bit more to fill in that space. But what I can't decide I wanna do is if I wanna mount the pump directly under them, like everyone seems to do, or if I wanna hide the pumps away down in the basement. I'm a little more inclined to doing the, the pump here up on top where it's visible. The only problem with that is that uh, because of the way the pumps get really close to this mid plate here, it's gonna, be, you're, it's gonna be impossible to adjust the speed once it's mounted. And when you're flushing the system, it's a lot easier to speed it up and slow it down, speed it up and slow it down uh, when you're actually bleeding and filling the system. So I'm not entirely sure how I want to go about that yet. Now, the nice thing about the EK Multi-Res, as you can see here, the Res X3, is you've got all kinds of ports on there to use. So no matter what, we're covered uh, on what we need to do. But it's gonna look really slick, especially when you have white coolant and red coolant in these side by side. Now, one thing I did encounter that I didn't really, th I mean, I knew about it, I didn't think too much about it, but I've gotta figure out how I wanna handle this, is the Southbridge block is right here in between both of the graphics cards, and this is gonna be a different loop from the graphics cards. So I have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. I mean, I don't know if I want to bring the tubes up and over and down into the mid plate and then have them come back out somewhere else. Or if I just kind of want to bend them up over and around squared and have a nice, you know, squared, cause all the bends I want, I want the bends to be square. I don't want them to be like 45s. I want them to be nice and square. Cause that just looks better considering everything in this case is square. So I have not determined how I'm best gonna handle this part right here. Obviously we'll figure that out together as we do this build log. The other complication with that is if I bring it up and over the RAM, it's gotta come up and over high enough and then down into the CPU block to where you can still get to the RAM and replace it if you need to. Now there's not gonna be anything practical about replacing parts in this build when it comes to the, um, the tubing because there's nothing practical about having water cooling parts anyway when it comes to replacing. Like if one of these graphics cards took a shit or the CPU took a shit or the motherboard, no matter what, you're gonna have to take it all apart to get it out. That's a downside of water cooling and you just have to learn to live with that. So that's where we are with this build so far. And uh, you know, I, I, the next thing I'm gonna tackle is probably get the lower radiator assembly together, get the, the drain ports in. And it's, it's now time to do a lot of planning. Planning is key when it comes to these types of builds because you don't wanna take the time to do something and just have to start all over. That takes a toll on your, you know, your time, your pocketbook, and your morale with the build. And when you're dealing with high-end parts like this, you don't wanna have any mistakes. So what do you guys think? Should I put the res right here side by side? I mean, I could do them front and back like that, but then one res is gonna be blocking the other, which is gonna have all this empty space that'll look silly because we do have the extra large window on here that is pretty much the whole thing is a window. Uh, not sure how I wanna do it. I'm really, I really am leaning towards this. I thought about maybe doing them staggered like that and having the pumps down below, but I'm just not sure. What would you guys do? Nice and even? Would you do it staggered somehow? I mean, we could technically, even if we wanted, do these sideways and bring the, uh, the acrylic tubing however we want because that's the cool thing about these multi-reses is we can do them however we want as long as the level is is above the port so I mean, we could even do it like like that if we wanted so i just can't make up my mind i'm gonna get on out of here guys if you want to talk about this build take it to twitter or the forum over at jace2cents.com or uh, take it right here in the comments if you like but with that said i'm gonna get the hell on out of here and as always i'll see you guys on social media and i'll see you in my next video